Japanese authorities are hiding the true extent of the crisis at their damaged nuclear plant, even as levels of radiation in Tokyo rise. Artie Zanina Galashko, who's now in the capital there in Japan, reports on the country's long history of silencing nuclear scandals. Radiation uh, at a town just about 100 kilometers north of Tokyo is about 300 times the norm. In the, in the Japanese capital itself, the radiation levels are at about 11 times as high. People are being told by the government that uh, the current radiation levels are at an acceptable rate, that they do not pose any danger to health. However, uh, the, as uh, evidence shows, as history shows, uh, the Japanese government hasn't exactly proven to be always, uh, always, always trustworthy. Worthy. And everything that it, it does say or put forth to the public should actually be checked thoroughly. Here's a report on that. With reactors at the Fukushima nuclear power plant and having gone up in smoke, fears about a possible meltdown loom large. Japanese authorities give assurances there is no imminent threat to Tokyo residents. But past evidence suggests they are not to be trusted completely. Over many years, the nuclear industry and the regulators in Japan, but also in every society, every country that operates nuclear power, you find consistently that there's a lack of transparency, a lack of openness. Maybe they just think, I think arrogantly, that that's too much information. Why should we provide that information? In fact, just five years ago, the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, admitted to falsifying temperature readings for cooling materials at Fukushima as early as in 1985. And with the country now facing a major disaster, the government will be careful in choosing its words. I think one thing that's going to happen here, though, is that the Japanese government is not only accountable, of course, to the people that they're trying to take care of, but also they're accountable to other countries and other nations that are involved in this response. In 2002, the government disclosed that at least 29 cases of damage to the reactor had been swept under the carpet. That incident led TEPCO's president and some senior officials to quit in scandal. In 2003, 17 TEPCO-operated plants were ordered to be shut down, again because the operator lied about what was happening at these sites. So when the Japanese officials put on a somber face but give assurances everything's fine, not everyone's convinced, particularly when the country's already got enough other problems to deal with. If you don't have the emergency resources, if your infrastructure has been destroyed, and the further you go away from the reactor, the more difficult, the more diverse the population settlements are, the more difficult it is to evacuate. You don't want to panic the public to get them to self-evacuate and maybe unwittingly put themselves in harm's way. But when thousands of lives are on the line, such a policy can easily be counterproductive. There's a growing distress among people in Japan that the information that we're receiving is not informing us to the extent that we would like it to. And it, that doesn't reduce panic. It just makes people all the more uncertain when they believe they can't trust fully the information they're being given. As it stands, Japan appears to be balancing on a brink of a nuclear meltdown. And though the official version of the events implores everyone to stay calm, history shows not all their words could be taken at face value. In Tokyo, Irina Galushko, RT.